It's all about physics. Now, what methods can a firearm manufacturer implement in their design to play a crucial role in reducing recoil? First is minimizing bore axis. Getting that barrel lineup as linear to your hand as possible will play a huge role in creating a linear recoil impulse. Now, how can the designer reduce the bore axis? By utilizing a non-tilting action like the speed lock system and reducing the slide and frame size. Well, Arsenal has done that with the Strike One. So Arsenal released the original Strike One design in 2012. The Arsenal Strike One is a polymer 9mm striker fired handgun manufactured in Italy. It floated around the US market for a few years and then pretty much disappeared. Fast forward a few years, American Precision Firearms began importing these Arsenal Moonraker laser guns to the US market again. No, it looks nothing like the 007 energy weapon, it just sounds cool. American Precision Firearms reached out to me to see if I was interested in testing one of these dudes out, and I absolutely was. What I received was the Strike One Speed, which is a spin-off from the standard Strike One model with a few enhancements. Some of these enhancements are a competition trigger, slide lightning cuts, and upgraded and impressive iron sights. If you're asking if this is an optic-ready model, the one I received is not. However, Arsenal does make a model with an optic-ready slide. Let's dive in and check it out. What's going on guys, this is Steve and welcome back to the Mr. Big Kid channel. Today we're playing with this guy right here. This is the Arsenal Strike One Speed imported by American Precision Firearms. If you look at it, your barrel line is right over here, right in the center of the slide. That's where your barrel lines up. You have a very thin frame right up top and then this beaver tail right in the back is super high. So your hand on there rides up really close to that barrel line, which is going to be your bore axis. So what that does is instead of having that browning style uh, tilting barrel, what happens is this thing just basically just pushes straight back and that barrel doesn't tilt at all. It just goes straight back. That gives you less of a muzzle flip when shooting it. Instead, that recoil impulse is going to be pushing more straight back, which helps in getting back on target, getting back on sight when you're shooting rapidly. It does have a bunch of unique cuts on it, some lightning cuts on the slide. You got some pretty standard slide serrations. I'm not gonna say they're aggressive. I'm not gonna say they're weak. Uh, they're just kind of there. So I'm not really impressed with the slide serrations themselves. And you also notice that there is no optics plate, no optics cut on here. I'm gonna take some focus and let's kind of draw it down to the grip over here. Now you'll notice on the grip, you have like four or five different patterns, which are unique. Now, I will say they seem to pattern this thing in all the right places with the right patterns. So on the bottom of the back strap, you have a vertical, you have vertical lines cut in, and then just above those vertical lines, you have some horizontal ovals, kind of like a, like a, I don't know, horizontal oval pattern. You'll see a close up right here. I really don't know how you would explain it. Then we look on the side, you have a bunch of little bumps. In the very center of your front strap, you have a bunch of um, squares, like these uh, this box pattern horizontal boxes and rectangles. And then right behind it on the front strap, sort of towards the front of the side panel, you have horizontal and vertical squares. I mean, I know it's kind of a goofy thing and it's not a complaint. I mean, I'll honestly tell you that I don't feel like I'm milking the grip when I'm shooting this. I'm not sitting there trying to get a better grip. My hand stays put and it's comfortable. So whatever they did, um, it works. I, th I thought it was very unique when I first saw it. But no, it's a it's an effective pattern. The trigger guard is very large. It's very generous. You're able to shoot this thing with gloves and no problems there. Then looking a little forward, you have a six slot Picatinny rail. One thing I'm really impressed with are the sights on this guy. So what's neat about them is obviously, like I said before, you don't have an optics cut on here. So you're forced to use your iron. These are dove mounted irons. You can tap them forward to actually sight them in a little bit. And then on the rear sight, it's a fully adjustable sight. You have windage and elevation adjustments on your rear sight. Now the actual sight itself is very impressive. And I will say this is not a good concealed carry sight on the front here. Um, it looks like it would snag up pretty good. You do have a serrated front sight with a red fiber optic tube inside it. And in the rear, you have a flat black serrated rear sight, which I like a lot. The sights do seem like they're high quality. They haven't shifted on me since shooting this. And on the front sight, you'll kind of notice there's a little, 
there's a little set screw towards the side. So you can tighten and loosen that to adjust it. The slide hold open slash release is actually very interesting. It functions very well and it's very comfortable. It's low profile, but it's actually contoured. It's not just a bar. So easy to pull back. It's very easy to lock it back and then dropping that slide it feels very smooth. You know, you don't have to push down that hard. Okay, overall sizing of this guy, it's a big gun. Uh, when I saw pictures online, it didn't seem that big, and I think that's because of that low bore axis, that very thin profile of the frame and the slide. But honestly, it's a very large gun. Um, I'll read out all the specs for you guys. Enjoy the elevator music with the specs. Let's check out the breakdown on this guy for cleaning and maintenance. Now, this is kind of the opposite of most handguns. So here's your takedown pin right over here. It goes through on both sides. You kind of hold the slide back just a little bit, and then you take your left hand, then you take your hand, and you push the pin in from the left side all the way out to the right, and then just pull it through. When that pin is out, you squeeze the trigger, and then it releases your slide forward, and then that's it. Obviously, when you take the slide off, you'll see the unique recoil system on this guy. You have your guide rod and spring over here. This will slightly drop down a little bit, which unlocks your barrel, and that's how it actually cycles. When it's back into battery, this pulls back up and locks that barrel in place. Easy to take down. You can simply take this off right here, and then your entire barrel comes out. Impressive. It's kind of cool to see something different out there, something I'm just not used to. So the good news is when you put this back inside your gun, it'll only go in one way. So I tried it because I'm like, ooh, I, I wonder if I took it out the right way. And this is backwards. It won't click all the way in when it's actually facing the right direction. That'll snap into place all the way. Then you just reverse the process. You take your, your guide rod, put it back in here. Then you take your slide assembly, just drop it straight on the front, hold it back a little bit and just jam it right through. Just like that, and boom, guns back together. Super easy to take down. I really enjoy a simple system, especially for breakdown. You don't need tools, so I like that. So first time ever firing the strike one speed. Let's see how it runs. Um, First ammo test is going to be the Winchester White Box 115 grain FMJs. 17 rounds loaded up, first mag. Let's see how we do. All right, first shots. I'm actually pretty damn impressed. Um, yeah, you can feel that muzzle flip does feel more of a backwards motion. I'm obviously low bore axis, right? That barrel is much closer to the level of the top of your hand. See how thin this beaver tail is right here. The trigger itself is interesting, extremely light pull. Um, let's do another mag of the 115 grains. See how it runs. Slide release drops real easy too. So this is the third mag, but now we switched ammo. So we went from Winchester white box to Remington. So again, full metal jackets, 115 grain. So, so far we're two mags into this, no hiccups. I'm using full 17 round mags too. So let's go ahead, let's do one with the Remington and see how it runs. The gun feels actually really good. It's a very comfortable shooter. Not a huge fan of the mag release though. There is almost kind of like a stickiness to it. So if you look at the back right here on the mag release, you kind of have that guard right there around that. It kind of keeps you from depressing this far enough. You gotta get your hand twisted around there and push a little harder. And then that mag feels like it finally wants to drop out. Otherwise, there's almost like a certain stickiness to it. Now the mag does drop freely but only once you get that button depressed far enough. Like I'm pressing it and it's about three quarters of the way in right now and I'm at the flush level of that little guard there. And then when you push past that guard, it drops out. Now I can see that actually being a purposeful feature probably to keep you from accidentally dropping your mag when you're shooting. I get that. Um, maybe it's just something I'm not used to. So I'm not saying I dislike it yet. My mag changes do feel a little bit slower. 
All right, so we got three rounds of Federal HSTs. Let's just see how they feed. Three rounds is good because number one, these are expensive. And number two, at least it'll tell you if they're gonna feed one, cycle the next and cycle the last and lock back. Feels fine, feeds well. But you know, so far with that range ammunition, the function has been great. Um, the recoil impulse does feel pretty good. It's not a very snappy gun whatsoever. It doesn't have much muzzle flip at all. You can really feel the difference between that low bore axis or something that's really riding high above your hand. Um, this thing, like I said, the recoil feels like it's pushing straight back, not as much of a flip from your muzzle rise from that recoil impulse. So very comfortable, extremely shootable gun. Um, yeah, I do wish there were optic cuts on it. I wish there were optic cuts on every gun, but this one just doesn't have it. So it is what it is. Um, styling is unique. I think it actually looks better in person than it did in pictures. I really like the, uh, the speed version, that red trigger and the stainless and the, the two-tone with the black and the stainless just looks pretty cool. Um, now this is, a spin-off. This is a version of the standard Strike 1. This is the speed version. The Strike 1 is actually a tactical pistol. So let's uh, let's talk about procurement. How did I get this? Well, the uh, the guys over at American Precision Firearms reached out to me uh, through my email and basically asked if I was interested in checking one of these guys out. And then when they asked what my terms are for doing a review on this gun, I just said they have to expect to have an honest review. So if there's any issues that happen with the gun, it's gonna be reported on video. At the same time, I'd also promise to report any good customer service that they've given me or feedback. So um, thankfully, and so far since using it, I haven't had any issues with it. I haven't had any failures with it. I don't really have anything negative to report with performance. Not yet. Let's talk about the feel of the trigger and then we're gonna actually put it on the scale and let's see how heavy this thing's actually pulling at. The gun's empty. This has a nice wide flat uh, forward canted trigger on it. So let's look at the actual trigger pull here. Tiny little bit of creep, all right. There's the creep and then boom, break. Once you're past that slight little creep, that break is so light and so crispy. Let's see how that reset is right here. Let's let off. Here's your reset. Boom. Has a nice short reset to it. That's your reset. Creep, break. So what I like about this is the trigger break is very predictable. Um, you can feel when it's gonna break. So you can kind of stage this trigger if you want. Uh, that said, it's smooth. Let me grab that trigger scale and let's do some measurements. Change my mind, I'm taking you guys to the table. We'll do our measurements together over here. Zeroing right. All right, we're zeroed. Let's give it a pull. Three point three pounds. Three pounds three ounces. Let's try that again. Three pounds zero ounces. Last one. I always like to do the three pulls. Three pounds one ounce. Now I do also want to say. This does require a break-in according to uh, the manual that came with the gun. So I know there's a lot of people that feel very negatively towards a break-in period on a gun. A lot of people, including myself, feel like if you have a gun that should be broken in by factory, especially when you're paying 1200 bucks or so, which is how much this model costs. I believe if you do the, stri the, if you do the standard Strike One model, I think it's around 900 to 1,000 bucks, but this is the speed version, so it's had a little bit of factory performance tuning on it, aftermarket trigger, all that stuff. So 1,200 bucks. Um, I would hope that the gun would be broken in and ready for me, but it is what it is, and honestly, if that's the case, I'm not gonna judge this thing too hard until after that break-in period, which is an extensive 500 rounds. Um, I had, didn't go through the break-in process, I'm just shooting it, and so far, it hasn't had any issues, which is great. The gun does feel like a good quality gun in general. It feels, um, it's got a good weight to it. It's got a good balance to it. So I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed. I'm pleasantly surprised. I've heard, I've seen mixed reviews online about this. So I was a little skeptical going into it. Now it could be because this is the speed version. So 
you know, maybe it's had a little tuning from factory where it's gonna, you know, clean up some of the issues of the standard base model strike one, but the model that they gave me, and again, I have a sample size of one. If the gun that is sent to me works well, I'm not gonna say it doesn't because that would be lying and dishonest also. This thing works well, it works very well. So I'm gonna take this thing out. I'm gonna keep shooting it, but let me know what you guys think. What are your thoughts on the strike one speed? Um, I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. So thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you have a good day.